the once empty waterways of Katmai National Preserve in Alaska are turning red. Millions of sockeye salmon are making their way inland from the ocean, but they are not alone. Hungry brown bears are waiting for them. If these salmon are to make it safely to their spawning grounds, they are going to have to face the grizzly gauntlet. Katmai National Park and Preserve makes up over 4 million acres of wilderness in southwest Alaska. It's estimated that over 2,000 brown bears live here. The name of these bears is often debated between brown and grizzly bears. You see, all grizzly bears are brown bears, but not all brown bears are grizzly bears. Biologically speaking, they're identical. However, grizzlies are considered to be a subspecies of brown bear. The difference between a grizzly bear and a brown bear is that in North America, brown bears are generally considered to be those that have access to coastal food resources, like salmon. Grizzly bears live further inland and typically do not have access to marine-derived food resources. Due to this, grizzlies tend to be considerably smaller in size. Male brown bears here can weigh over 1,000 pounds. The bears in Katmai have started to make their way down to the waterways fed from the ocean, some coming from many miles away for one reason. The sockeye salmon are returning to spawn. These salmon are born in lakes and rivers in Katmai, but eventually spend several years in the Pacific Ocean before returning to spawn. Sockeye spend most of their lives a deep blue color before turning red in spawning season. The red coloration comes from their diet. Male sockeyes will also develop a more pronounced hooked snout. They will only spawn once in their lifetime, dying after reproduction is completed. The journey from the ocean is a very difficult one for the salmon. They must swim against strong currents, leap waterfalls, fight shallow rapids, and most difficult of all, survive the hungry bears that are waiting for them. The water level in this area is unusually low this year, making it more difficult for the salmon to get upstream. Without the huge numbers of fish, this makes it much more challenging for the bears to catch the salmon. This adds extra pressure on bears like this one, because she's not fishing for herself. Like many of the other bears here, she has little mouths to feed. Some of the cubs, like these triplets, are making their first visit to the river. Both nervous and curious of everything they see. For some of the other cubs, their time as a family is coming to an end. Bears with cubs at this stage will often get a little aggressive with cubs after catching a salmon, forcing them to learn to fish on their own.
The bears all have different styles of fishing. Some will run up and down the river, forcing the salmon into the shallow rapids, making them easier to catch. Others, like this bear, use a snorkeling technique, placing their faces in the water to watch the fish beneath the surface. And then there are bears like this one. They will sit and wait patiently for the right moment before leaping from the bank of the river to land on the fish. This bear has perfected that technique. When the fish are plentiful, the bears will be pickier as to what parts they will eat. They prefer the skin, brain, and eggs of the salmon, leaving the rest for the scavengers. Despite all of the challenges they face, many of the salmon will make it to spawn successfully, completing their life cycle and thus beginning a new one. <laughs>